part five section one chapter twelve of short history of the christian church by john fletcher hurst this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twelve religious life of the colonies the zeal of the first colonists was intense and steady no material embarrassment was permitted to obscure the original idea of colonization namely an open field for spiritual life extensive revivals prevailed throughout new england the later colonists were received by the earlier groups with a cordial spiritual salutation the first generation of protestant american citizens took better care of new immigrants and more rapidly incorporated them into the religious life of the country than any succeeding generation has done schools were founded churches were built and large plans made for the conversion of the indians the prevailing idea of the puritan colonies was that they had the mission of building up great religious commonwealths and solving in the new world the religious problems which could not be solved in the old this period of religious fervor continued to sixteen sixty when a season of decline began which continued down to seventeen twenty the decline was induced by the devastating indian wars the witchcraft delusion and the political agitations arising out of the oppressive measures of the british government the new england preachers were able guides many of them had come from english universities and brought with them great literary skill an intimate acquaintance with the theological controversy and a practical knowledge of the dangers of political oppression to religious life wilson cotton shepherd the mathers phillips higginson and skelton wielded the colony of massachusetts bay at will the religious spirit absorbed all others the preacher was the real governor no public measure had any chance of success without the clerical support brewster in plymouth hooker in connecticut davenport in new haven roger williams in rhode island and hunt and whittaker in virginia were the giants of their time political preaching was the order of the day the old testament was searched for parallels of duty whenever a war against the indians was to be fought or a new british aggression was to be resisted or pestilence famine witchcraft or earthquakes were to be wisely interpreted and guarded against in the future books on the current questions were multiplied the printing press of new england was the powerful battery ever thundering against evils existing or apprehended the great awakening began about seventeen thirty five its first indications were seen in the wonderful effects of the preaching of jonathan edwards in northampton massachusetts whitefield came over from england and made several tours through the atlantic colonies his preaching attracted multitudes and the numerous converts through his preaching united with the non-episcopal churches the number converted through his american ministration has been estimated as high as fifty thousand the physical manifestations attending the great awakening were very similar to those with which we are familiar in the wesleyan movement trances swoons transports tears cryings tremblings these were some of the physical signs of that wonderful religious upheaval prince frelinghuysen finley and the brothers tennant of new jersey and davis and blair of virginia and others contributed greatly to the spiritual result all the churches had their earnest leaders the effects of the great revival which extended from new hampshire down to the carolinas were immediately seen a new spirit of toleration thrilled every nerve of the colonial churches new church edifices were erected many young men entered the ministry schools of all grades sprang into existence and large funds were brought from their hiding places and cast into the lord's treasury religious books multiplied even the conservative benjamin franklin rejoiced to publish the sermons of whitefield and tennant the westminster catechism and the powerful tracts of john wesley the southern colonies though visited by whitefield 
did not share extensively in the great revival of the middle of the eighteenth century the protestant episcopal church in virginia did not give a cordial welcome to the revival influences the preaching in virginia pulpits was generally formal and on topics merely moral although morgan morgan and devereux gerat were notable exceptions the writings of puritans in the old world were promptly introduced into the new special pains were taken by the new england fathers to get early copies of the great works which their co-religionists in england were producing the works of baxter were reproduced in boston and brought promptly into their early new england homes the songs of watts were reprinted in many editions and were sung in the most distant settlements bunyan was beloved and became a household companion for milton's poetry there was little taste but his political tracts were great favorites for they were thunderbolts against tyranny of all the writers who contributed most to found the republic of the united states milton probably bears away the palm End of chapter 12